Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today's case, we are diving, unfortunately, into the community of incels. And I am sure you all know what an incel is, what the incel community is. But it is basically an online subculture that mostly contains not all, but mostly contains young men wanting to find a sexual partner, but are unable to do so. And they blame society, but mostly women for not being able to get a sexual partner. And this can result in a lot of rage, a lot of anger, and the consequences can be deadly. And I'm sure most of you have probably seen my video on Elliot Roger, who is probably the most infamous incel. I mean, how can you bloody forget that case? Wow, Elliot Roger was a piece of work. Hi, Elliot Roger here. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. And it's been very torturous. And Elliot committed an absolutely horrific crime in the name of incels. He was taking revenge. And unbelievably, Elliot Roger is seen as a hero in the incel community. And that is just so worrying. And the perpetrator in today's case was actually friends with Elliot Roger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the supreme gentleman himself. So the perpetrator in today's case is a man called Alec Manassian. So yeah, he was buddies with Elliot Roger and nothing good comes out of being friends with someone like Elliot Roger. And after Elliot Roger died as a quote-unquote hero, Alec was inspired. He wanted to carry on the rebellion. How do you feel about girls in general? I, I'm attracted to them. Okay, okay. Have you ever had a relationship with a, with a, a female? I don't wish to answer that. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. And given the topic that we are going to be talking about, I can guarantee you Sassy Danielle is going to come out. So uh, let's jump in. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little bit rough today. I'm feeling a little under the weather. So apologies if I'm not fully with it in today's video, but I am trying my best. Alec was born on the 3rd of November, 1992, making him a Scorpio. And he grew up in the city of Richmond Hill in Canada, just outside of Toronto. And he lived with his parents and his older brother. Now, growing up, Alec lived a pretty normal, comfortable suburban life. His parents had migrated to Canada from Armenia and Iran, and they bought this really lovely home and they were were living a dream. They had two children and the family were just really happy. However, for Alec, things were not that easy. Growing up, Alec was described as different. And I hate using that word different, but that is how people, not me, that is how other people have described Alec. And I hate using that term different because everyone is different and there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their unique personalities. But growing up, it is said that Alec was very quiet. He was very sensitive. He had trouble with social cues. He didn't really know how to do small talk. He didn't always know or like making eye contact with people. He was just a a little bit awkward in social situations more than normal and he just really in general just didn't know how to socialize it was a skill that he just never could quite pick up and when Alec started school as a young boy he just really struggled to fit in he often played in the playground on his own he never really spoke to the other children in the school in his class and in class whenever a teacher would talk to him Alec would get really really angry it almost seems like he didn't like the attention. He didn't want the teachers to kind of point him out and ask him questions and make him talk in front of the class. He would just get really angry and embarrassed. He hated being put on the spot, which to be honest, I can relate to. There is nothing that I hated more than when I was in school, when a teacher would like point at me and ask me to like stand up and speak in front of the class. Oh my God, I would literally have a panic attack right there. Getting up and standing up in front of people and doing a presentation was literally my worst nightmare. I would always be conveniently ill on those days. So I actually can relate to Alec in this situation. But Alec, he would just get so embarrassed and he would get up and run out of the classroom. And as well with Alec, he hated praise. It's almost like he just hated attention in general. Good or bad, just, he just didn't want attention. And when it came to interacting with other children his age, he just didn't know how to do it. He didn't want to do it. His parents really struggled with him at home as well. Whenever he wouldn't get his own way, he would throw the worst temper tantrum 
problems. And sometimes he would actually run and start bashing his head against a wall. He also didn't know how to smile. It was something that Alec, he just did not do. He didn't smile. He didn't laugh. Alec just found a lot of things in life very difficult and everything was a huge challenge for him and his parents. And at some point in his childhood, after struggling for so long and struggling with various issues, Alec's parents took him to the doctors and he was diagnosed with pervasive development disorder, which is now considered part of the autism spectrum disorder. So now we skip to the mid 2000s and Alec has just started high school and he was still struggling with all of the same things, but in particular socializing. He still really struggled to interact with the other kids in his class and unfortunately now that he has reached high school age I feel like we all know where this is going because Alec was bullied relentlessly and I truly mean he was bullied so bad. Alec was bullied relentlessly because he was quote unquote different and even though Alec he obviously goes on to commit an absolutely horrific act and there's no excuse to that no one deserves to be bullied like no one point blank. So when Alec started attending high school, he was placed in a special needs class, which instantly made him a target for bullies. And I cannot even tell you how much that infuriates me. Alec had a lot of physical tics. For example, he would shake a lot. He would rock himself back and forth. He would be tapping things constantly. Like he would be tapping his head. He would be tapping surfaces. And this was one of a few things that he was bullied relentlessly for. Alec also developed this habit of spitting into his hands and then rubbing his hands together. He would also sometimes pull up his shirt and put his shirt over his head and then he would spit in his shirt. And the other children Children. They were just so grossed out about this. They just completely bullied him. I think we can all imagine what the bullying was like for Alec. And then one of his other physical tics is that Alec would go around and start like growling at people or even meowing at people. And then he would try and bite them. And because of this behavior in particular, the other children started calling him Chewbacca from Star Wars. So Alec would run up to people, he would start meowing or growling or trying to bite them and people would laugh at him. But Alec, because he can't read social cues, Alec thought that people were laughing with him, not at him, which is just so sad. So Alec thought that this behavior, this going around and running up to people, meowing and growling and trying to bite them was making people like him. So Alec started to do it more and then people would laugh at him even more. So then he started doing it even more and it was just this vicious cycle. And it just became so well known that his nickname was Chewbacca. A lot of the students in the school didn't know Alec's real name. They just knew him as Chewbacca. And Alec, as well as being bullied, he was just really, really isolated and lonely. He didn't have any friends. He spent all of his time at school on his own. He would go home and again, just be on his own in his room. And then as Alec progressed through high school, School, there was one more problem that is pretty significant to today's case, and that is girls. Throughout high school, Alec would struggle to talk to girls. He would struggle to even look at them. When a girl would even look at Alec, talk to him, just literally do anything, Alec would completely freeze up and he would just shut down. He wouldn't know what to do. He wouldn't know what to say. And whenever other students, like when Alec was around them, whenever other students would talk about like what girls they found cute or like what celebrities they fancied, blah, 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 Alec would feel so uncomfortable. He just wouldn't know what to do. He wouldn't know what to say. And the other students started to notice how uncomfortable the subject of girls made Alec. So this again became another thing that he was bullied about. Other students would literally force Alec to go up to girls. And of course, this was his worst nightmare, but other students would threaten Alec with violence if he didn't go up and talk to girls. So when Alec was forced, like literally forced into going up to a girl to talk to them, obviously Alec would go up to this girl and he would completely freeze up. He wouldn't know what to say. And then everyone would just laugh. And it got so bad that Alec literally became terrified of girls. It's like he really did associate bullying with girls. And it became quite common for Alec to rock himself back and forth. And he would be whispering under his breath, I don't like girls. I don't like 
like girls. I don't like girls. And it almost became this like chant for him. He would say this over and over again. When he would walk past a girl, he would be heard saying, I don't like girls. I don't like girls. I don't like girls. And whenever a girl would approach him, he would physically jump back and say, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. His fear of girls ran deep. And this fear of girls and of women extended outside of school as well. So if Alec and his family ever went out to a restaurant and the server was a woman, and if they asked Alec what he wanted to order, he would just completely freeze up. He wouldn't know what to say and he would just be silent. It's almost like he was refusing to talk to a woman or a girl. And that was pretty much Alec's high school experience. So now we skip forward to when Alec is 18 years old and he has finally left high school, which I assume he was probably over the moon with because he was bullied through the whole of high school. It literally never let up. And the more he was bullied, the more he isolated himself. It came to a point now where Alec was barely leaving the house because he was so scared of the outside world. So because he was spending so much time at home, locked up in his room, Alec turned to video games Halo was his favorite, but also the internet. The internet pretty much became Alec's whole world. It became a source of comfort for him. It was the only way that he was able to interact with other people because he was in the comfort and the safety of his own home. And this obviously obsession and communicating with people online would come back up later on in the case, but in a much darker way. And because Alec was so obsessed with the internet, but especially video games. This led him to pursue a degree in computer programming. He enrolled in Seneca College in Toronto, which was not too far from his family home. He started attending classes and he did pretty well. Computers just seemed to be his thing. It was something that he was really naturally good at. He just thrived in this environment. He still struggled with the social element of college, but he was now in his element. He was learning about a subject that he was actually good at. He made friends at college for the first time because he was around like-minded people. So even though he wasn't the best at talking and social cues, and small talk and stuff like that, he was still able to talk about programming, about computers. He still had that one subject that he had in common with other people. And because Alec was so good, he started almost tutoring the other students in his class. He helped other students build apps. There is even a video online that shows Alec taking part in a project with another student. Oh, hi, good to see you there. I'm using these fantastic new glass phones from Just In Time Flowers Industries. They let me comfortably wear my sunglasses and headphones at the same time. It just seems like this is the first time, like truly the first time in Alec's whole life that he was finally enjoying himself. And he was slowly building his confidence because after being in high school, experiencing what he has experienced, his confidence was through the floor, like he had none. But now that he was at college, he was starting to have the confidence to raise his hand in class, actually answer questions in class and speak in front of people. And a couple of years go by and things are just going up and up for Alec. But then things start to go downhill again. And why was that? Well, it all comes back to girls. It is now October 2013. Alec had just started his third year at college. He was weeks away from turning 21, but there was one thing that he could not stop thinking about, and that was girls. So even though Alec had made some friends, his social skills had improved, they hadn't improved when it come to girls. He still struggled so much to talk to women and that was other women in his class, that was women teachers, just any woman ever he still struggled to speak to. There had been glimmers, like glimmers of hope over the three years that he was in college. He even one point plucked up the courage to ask a girl for her number and the girl gave him her number and Alec was so, so happy and he went home and he messaged the girl like he was just so over the moon, but the girl never responded. So that kind of hit him quite hard. So it's now October 2013. It's coming up to his 21st birthday and Alec was attending a Halloween party and Alec kind of gave himself a little bit of a pep talk and he was like, you know what? I'm turning 21 soon. I'm getting really good grades. I'm getting confident. I am going to speak to a girl at this party. Like I am determined. I'm going to speak to a girl, maybe do some flirting. I'm just, I'm just going to do it. So Alec arrives at this party and he plucks up the courage to approach a group of girls 
girls. But as he is approaching them, the group of girls turn around and just start laughing at him. Now, these are Alex words like this is what he has said happened we don't actually know if this did happen or i just don't know alec he felt ashamed he felt embarrassed and this is when apparently this group of girls they went up to a group of guys who in alec's own words were very tall very handsome they had very big muscles they had very big arms and in alec's own words the girls went up to this group of guys and started feeling their arms to be honest i don't know if i believe that this happened but yeah and apparently they were all laughing and joking and they were all flirting and alec he left that party absolutely furious he just felt like the world wasn't fair why were girls not attracted to him why were girls so mean to him why did they always just laugh at him alec wanted attractive girls to put their arms around him laugh at his jokes flirt with him he kept thinking to himself why do these girls just keep going after these complete assholes like guys that are complete idiots why do the girls always go after those kinds of guys like why are they never interested in me i am so kind i'm polite i'm clever and after alec left that party he just kept thinking all of these thoughts over and over in his head that just life wasn't fair and this was a very significant turning point for alec because his fear of women ran deep and he was scared of women for a very long time Time, but this moment is when his views on girls and women really turned in a very significant way because it turned very negative. This party was the trigger, almost the origin story of Alec Manassian, if you will, of what he goes on to do and how he becomes an incel. And after that significant Halloween party, Alec went back to the internet and he started to search for people that had similar problems to him. People that were frustrated that girls never showed them attention, didn't want to date them. And this is when he started to come across the incel forums online. And like we briefly mentioned in the beginning, if you don't know what an incel is and you haven't seen my video on Elliot Roger, incels define themselves as people that want to have sex but can't find someone to have sex with. So they believe that they are forced against their will to be celibate. And this is where the term incel comes from. It's shorthand for involuntarily celibate. And there are large incel communities online where people will gather and discuss their frustrations. And I just want to make this clear that being an incel, it's not necessarily necessarily a bad thing. I feel like in modern times, the word incel has become attached to people like Elliot Roger, Alec Manassian. It normally is associated with young men that hate women and just want to hurt and kill women, but that's not always the case. And something that I just found kind of crazy is that the person that originally came up with the term incel was a woman. And I was just like mind blown by that. I was like, what? You could not have convinced me. Like I would have just thought, and this is obviously my bias coming in. I would have just thought that it was a man that came up with this. But no, back in the 90s, a woman called Elena described herself as being involuntarily celibate. And she would post online about her problems and her social awkwardness and just the fact that she could never find a romantic partner. And this is where incel comes from. And it's just kind of weird. Was she the first online? incel like that's just crazy that it was a woman and it's not a bad thing being an incel is not a bad thing it's just that in recent years the term incel has been dominated by young men who have very misogynistic very damaging and dangerous views on society and they want to act out their frustrations they want to hurt people their general ideology is that society is broken and society is unfairly treating incels and that women only should show sexual interest in rich, wealthy, good-looking young men. But yeah, so for this video, when I talk about incels, I'm talking about the bad ones, okay? Not the good ones. And they have their own terminology and everything. According to incels, and obviously that's very generic, the top 20% of men who are attractive, rich, wealthy, have six packs, they are known as chads. And the women that go after the chads that the incels also want to have sex with, they are known as stasis. So you following, we have chads and stasis. 
Those are, according to incels, the top of the chain. And incels hate Chads and Stacys with a passion. Because incels, they want to have sex with the Stacys. But they can't have sex with the Stacys because the Stacys are only interested in the Chads. And then everyone else is what is called a normie, which means you're just normal. You're your average. Average attractiveness, average wealth, just average place in society. And incels also hate normies. Not as much as the Chads and the Stacys, but yeah, they also hate the normies because the normies also need to be put in their place because the normies also don't want to have sex with the incels. Basically, incels don't like anyone that's not an incel. And then incels are at the bottom of the food chain. They are the ones that apparently no one wants to have sex with. And you know what really baffles me about um, the incels that we come across in like these videos is that they never think that it's their personality that is off-putting. Mm -mm. No, they place everything on looks. It's so strange, isn't it? It's like if you just fix your attitude and you actually are nice, maybe you would get somewhere. Who would have thought? And incels think that it is a huge injustice that no one wants to have sex with them. And who do they blame for this? Well, of course, they blame women, especially the stasis. They believe that men are entitled to sex. But in the current climate, the sexual marketplace gives women too much freedom to choose who they want to have sex with. Let that sink in. Let <laughs> women... <laughs> have too much freedom in the sexual marketplace. Wow, 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 wow. Incels believe that sex is their birthright, that women should essentially put up and shut up, and that women should be shared around equally to have sex with. But oh no, the chads are taking up all the women. I'm sorry, it's just absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? But wait until you hear this next part, because incels go as far as saying that every time a woman deprives them of sex, it's actually reverse rape. I know, I know, I know. What? What even is reverse rape? And I was just like, oh my God. Incels have said that reverse rape can be just as dangerous and damaging to a person as actual rape. Have you ever heard of such ridiculousness. And most of these incel forums can be found on Reddit and 4chan. And I actually decided to try and find some because, you know, I, I like to do my research. I like to try and get into the minds of these people. So I went on to 4chan because that seemed to be um, the worst of the worst. What you can find on Reddit is pretty tame in comparison to 4chan. So I went to 4chan because everyone posts anonymously on 4chan. So I think that probably has helps people be more offensive, if you know what I mean. And oh my God, the derogatory language that some of these people were using. Oh my God, the words that they were using to describe women. I didn't spend long on there because why would you? Like, I don't want to read stuff like that. I don't want to read all of this delusion and this derogatory language that was so misogynistic. But what really shocked me and what I was not expecting was that so many of the profile pictures of these anonymous people were penises. Like just straight up, penises. I was not expecting that. Like, pfft, no. And I was like, yeah, this is not for me. X, click off. But anyway, back to Alec, because he soon made his way onto these forums and he found like-minded people. He found fellow incels and he really just dived into this world and he just completely became engrossed in the incel community. And eventually, in January of 2014, Alec came across a particular post and it caught his eye and it was posted by none other than Elliot Roger, the supreme gentleman himself. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. And if you don't know who Elliot Roger is, he's almost like the king of the incels. Like he is seen as a hero in the incel community. He's actually labeled himself as the supreme gentleman. And if you don't know who Elliot Roger is, he basically went on to commit mass murder in the name of incels, but we'll get more onto what he's done in a minute. So before Elliot went on to commit the horrific act, Alec came across a post from Elliot on Reddit and Alec immediately DM'd Elliot on Reddit and the two of them formed a very close relationship. 
Alec felt like he could really identify to Elliot and the struggles that he was going through, not being able to find a sexual partner, his resentment towards the Chads and the Stacys. And despite Elliot being in the US, he was in California, and Alec being in Canada, Alec wanted to meet up with Elliot in person. Alec really looked up to Elliot. However, just four months later, Elliot started sending Alec all of these cryptic messages, saying that he was going to go on an important mission. He doesn't know if he's going to come back from this mission alive. That a lot of incels were supporting his mission and that a lot of incels were telling Elliot to quote, start the rebellion. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. And after all of these very cryptic messages, Alec simply responded, I wish you good luck. And then three days later, on the 23rd of May 2014, Elliot went on to commit what is now known as the Isla Vista killings, where he murdered six people and wounded 14 more in a mass shooting before then turning the gun on himself. Welcome back. We have an update on that Isla Vista shooting. It happened around nine o'clock in Isla Vista. The death toll could be climbing. Last we heard from witnesses, it was at four. And before he carried out this huge mass shooting, Elliot posted this huge manifesto online, detailing all of the troubles that he has had in his life. It is a very, oh, poor me kind of manifesto. But the main takeaway from the manifesto is that he was doing this mass shooting in the name of incels, that he was taking revenge, that he was fed up of the Chads and the Stacys taking taking advantage of him, walking all over him, not paying attention. That is basically Elliot Roger in a nutshell. But if you want to hear more about Elliot Roger, I did a whole ass video on the Supreme Gentleman. So you should definitely go check that out after this video if you want to hear about him. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. And it's been very torturous. But Elliot's crimes were absolutely horrific. Like, they truly were. That case is still a case that has stayed with me, like all of his videos, because he would post on YouTube. And he was just so delusional. It's, just, it's a case that has just never really left me. But after the attack, the Isla Vista killings, Elliot Roger was seen as a hero in the incel community. And I just can never get over that. That is something else that I can just not wrap my head around. How can somebody who has committed mass murder, how can they be seen as a hero? And still to this day, Elliot Roger is seen as a hero, as a martyr, that he was the start of the rebellion. And Alec Manassian himself has said how proud he was of Elliot and what he has done. And it just makes me sick. It really does. I've seen so much support for Elliot in the incel community over what he did. So after Elliot committed, the mass murder. Because Alec and Elliot were quite close and because Alec seemed to look up to Elliot, this made Alec want to involve himself in the incel community even more. And this is when he went over to 4chan for the first time because prior to this, he was just on Reddit. Well, now he was on 4chan. And like I've just said, things on 4chan are even more extreme. It is not a good place. Like the incel community on 4chan, it's a dark, dark place. And his ties in the incel community on 4chan Chan just grew and grew and he went deeper and deeper into this world. And then a year later in 2015, Alex started messaging another incel called Chris Harper Mercer. And it turns out that Chris Harper would be another mass murderer. Because in October of 2015, Chris Harper Mercer was completely fed up with his life. He had no girlfriend and he had no hopes of even getting a girlfriend. And he was so inspired by Elliot Roger that he acquired a gun and he went on to carry out a mass shooting known as the Umqua Community College shootings, where he murdered nine people before taking his own life. Another shooting in America, another community shattered and more young lives senselessly taken. It happened on the campus of a small community college in Roseburg, Oregon. And this was another person that Alec was friends with. I don't think he was as friendly with Chris as he was with Elliot, but it was still someone that Alec had had communications with. So two of his friends have gone on to commit mass murder in the name of incels to start a rebellion. And in both instances, Alec has said that he was proud of both of them. And I think what the big problem here is, is that Elliot Roger and Chris Harper Mercer are seen as heroes. They are celebrated for what 
what they have done. They have been lifted up, they have been put on a pedestal. And unfortunately, someone like Alec sees that and wants it for themselves. They want the attention, they want the glory. Not that I'm making excuses for him, I'm just trying to figure out where things went wrong. And I think Alec is somebody that craved friendship and companionship and just to be included. That he saw his two friends, Elliot and Chris, he saw them be lifted up as heroes and he wanted that for himself. He could not stop fantasizing about it and he was getting pulled deeper and deeper into this toxic world of incels on 4chan. He wanted to overthrow the Chads and the Stacys. He wanted to make society right again and he wanted incels to finally take their rightful place in the world which was at the top of the food chain. And Alec now would obsessively think about committing mass murder for the next two years. But before that would happen, in September of 2017, something very significant happened, and that is that Alec joined the army. Over the last six years from the moment he started college, Alec had had a lot of ups and downs, and during those six years was when he started to get involved in the incel community. So he went to college, he did college for a few years before dropping out. He got a job, but then he got fired from that job, so then he went back to college, dropped out of college, college again, got another job and then got fired from that job pretty much straight away. And his parents were fed up. They were fed up that he could just never seem to commit to anything, that he just didn't really seem to have direction in his life and that he was still living at home and he had no prospect of getting a job or even finishing college. So this is when his parents convinced him to join the army. Now, oh, I don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion or not. I don't think that this was the right thing to do. I, I just don't think that you should convince someone like Alec to join the army. But Alec, it's very clear that he struggles in social situations. I don't think somewhere like the army is going to be the best place for Alec. But Alec agreed to join the army. He went for his entrance exam and he passed with flying colours, which I truly don't know how he did. And it wasn't long until he packed up his belongings. He moved out of his parents' home for the first time and he moved moved to Quebec where he was now in a military training facility and it turns out that the army wasn't the best place for Alec. He did not have a good time at all. He struggled to form a bond with his fellow recruits and he struggled with the physical aspect. He struggled to finish drills. He would always stumble and fall over. His physical tics were very present still and they were very distracting to the other recruits. He was terrible with time management. He was not very good at listening and taking on instructions and he just couldn't carry out the simple tasks of like making his bed and ironing his clothes, shining his shoes. And because he had no discipline and he was always just falling behind, his platoon were always getting in trouble. And this built up a lot of resentment. People didn't like Alec. He was bringing everyone down. And this is kind of when the bullying started again. They would talk behind Alec's back, make insults. And the leaders were thinking, how the hell did he even pass the initial examination to get onto this training program and truly I don't know how he did either. And they were thinking, how can we even trust Alec with a firearm? We can't even trust him to make his bed. And it turns out that they kind of decided that they couldn't trust Alec with a firearm. He wasn't suited for the army. So after 16 days, like that is it, that is how long he was there, Alec actually caught strep throat. So he was ill and he was given a discharge. But after his failed attempt at the army, this is when Alec's resentment towards the world grew and grew. Like truly, I think that this was a pretty defining moment. I can't say for sure, but I think Alec joining the army definitely accelerated what is about to happen. So after the army, Alec returned to college. He is now 25 years old, and this is seven years after he originally went to college. But he now, at 25 years old, only has one more semester to do before he can get a degree. So he goes back to college, he wants to finish off and get his degree degree. And when he goes back to college, Alec is a completely different person. That whole experience in the army really changed him. Because when he goes back to college, he's now really argumentative. He's very angry. He's very disruptive. He went from being somebody so socially awkward that he couldn't really talk to anybody. But now he's starting arguments with people, like starting fights with people. He told one student that he left the army because he didn't get to use guns as often as he had hoped. Alec saying that makes you question what his motives were behind joining the army. 
did Alec only want to join the army to learn how to use a gun? Because his two close friends in the inside community had obviously gone on to commit mass murder using a gun. Did Alec want to follow in their footsteps and also use a gun? Because if that is true, that is very, very scary. And during his final semester at college, Alec was falling deeper and deeper into the incel community. He was getting very, very angry at the world. He was angry that he was 25 years old and he hadn't even had one date with a girl. He was angry that nobody seemed to notice him. He was fed up of being rejected from the world. And now he wanted to become a legend in the incel community, just like Elliot Roger. And he started to plan how he could do that. And then on the 19th of April, Alec finally graduated college and he got his degree. And this is when he posted a message on Facebook, which simply read, quote, finally finished college, fuck you all and good riddance. And then almost immediately after this, Alec put his horrific plan into motion. Because on the 22nd of April 2018, Alec headed to 4chan and started talking to his incel friends. And he simply wrote, quote, there will be a beta uprising tomorrow. And beta uprising is just more incel talk for starting a rebellion and starting to overthrow society. And Alec followed this statement by also saying, I encourage others to follow suit. And a lot of people were praising Alec. And Alec was loving all of this attention that he was getting. And another incel user on 4chan also said to Alec that he was really excited about what Alec was planning and that he also had a plan for a beta uprising in the November of 2018. But thankfully, that other incel user that said that they had a plan for November 2018 was thankfully an empty threat. However, Alec, his plan, it was not an empty threat. He planned to carry out his beta uprising. The incel rebellion, they must fight back and take revenge. And tragically, the next day, this is exactly what he did. So at around 12.30pm on the 23rd of April 2018, Alec arrived at the Rider Truck Rental Depot in Toronto. And over the past couple of weeks, Alec had decided that he was going to hire a vehicle as part of his plan because he was not able to get his hands on a gun. He was going to hire a vehicle and drive into people, and that is how he was going to cause mass casualties. So he booked this rental a couple of weeks beforehand. He had chosen a van that was quite large, but also not too large. He told the rental company that he needed to hire this van to move out of college, which is not suspicious. That is something very normal to hire a rental van car for, like moving. So the rental company, they didn't ask many questions really. They did a background check on Alec and it came up clear. There was no concerns about Alec whatsoever. So on this day, Alec went to the counter. He got the keys for his rental van and Alec asked the person behind the counter who happened to be a woman, Alec asked this woman if she could come to the van and show him how to put the van into drive because he couldn't figure it out, which, um, is kind of worrying. And apparently everyone at the depot were laughing at him because they'd never had a customer ask them how to put a van into drive before. So Alec went back out to the van and he sat in the van for like 20 minutes. And he was just going over the plan in his head over and over again and his hands were trembling. And after sitting in the van for 20 minutes, he then posted on Facebook, quote, private recruit Manassian Inventory 00010, wishing to speak to Sergeant 4chan, please. C23249161. And that was his army recruit number, by the way, that really long number. The incel rebellion has already begun. We will overthrow all the chads and the stasis. All hail the supreme gentleman, Elliot Roger. And then after posting this message on Facebook, Alec put the van into drive and made his way out of the parking lot. And sadly, this is now when we get to the absolutely tragic events of today's case. Because at some point after 1 p.m., Alec drove away from the rider truck rental depot. He drove past his university campus 
and he made his way towards Young Street, which is in the North York district of Toronto. And on the 23rd of April, 2018, it was a Monday lunchtime. The weather was so nice. People were walking up and down the street, enjoying themselves. And Young Street is one of the busiest streets in Toronto. It is packed full of restaurants and retail shops, just other businesses. There is a cinema complex, a Wendy's, a Starbucks, drug stores, hardware stores, like there's pretty much everything on this street. And the street has really wide sidewalks. So there is a lot of people people everywhere. And on this day, people were just going about their day, like maybe grabbing some lunch, just going to a few shops, like on their lunchtime, on their break. And people were just enjoying themselves. It was just a regular Monday afternoon, but that was all soon about to change. Because at 1.24 p.m., Alec made his way onto Young Street. And this is when the attack began. It started with Alec running a red light at a very busy junction. He was driving recklessly and chaotically. He was beeping his horn at other vehicles to get other vehicles to move out of his way. And then he quickly mounted a curb and he drove onto the sidewalk, that very big wide sidewalk that had so many people on and he just drove straight onto it. And Alec put his foot down on the accelerator and he drove into a large group of people, injuring several of them and very sadly killing one of them instantly. But sadly, Alec didn't stop there. After hitting this first group of people, he put his foot back down on the accelerator and just continued on driving down the sidewalk, hitting as many people as he could. And at this point, people further down the street had started to realise what was going on. So as you can imagine, there was mass panic. It was absolutely chaotic. People were screaming and shouting. People were trying to run in the direction of safety. People were literally jumping out of the way of Alec as he was hurtling down the sidewalk towards them. Other drivers on the road were looking on, horrified, just completely helpless. They didn't know what to do. There was people running everywhere. There was people running to help the injured. And Alec, he just kept going. And he was hitting everything in his path. He was plowing down telephone poles, smashing into bus shelters. Alec then reached Mel Lassman Square, which is another very busy area. And he quickly drove into many more people. And these people, they didn't have a clue what was even coming at them when Alec hit them. And many more people lost their lives in this collision. And then after passing Mel Lassman Square, Alec then went back onto the road because the sidewalk was just too narrow. But he soon found his way back onto a sidewalk that was big enough for him. And he again, just kept on going. He put his foot down on the accelerator again, hitting as many people as he could. He injured so many people and he was also killing so many people. And at this point, 911 calls were pouring in from onlookers. I cannot even imagine the mass panic being in a situation like this, not knowing which direction to run in to save yourself, to save your loved ones, but then also seeing so many people injured on the floor and also trying to to help them. At the north end of Young Street, which is where the attack began, onlookers were now helping the injured on the ground. People had jumped out of their vehicles to try and help, but they were just coming across bodies that were face down on the ground and they couldn't tell if these people were alive or dead. A police officer on foot arrived at the scene and tried to help as many people as they could, but it was just absolutely chaos. There was bodies literally everywhere. And then the police officer came across a woman that was lying face down on the ground and they checked for signs of life in this woman but sadly there was no signs of life. This woman had very sadly lost her life in this attack and that is what this police officer was doing. They were just moving from one body to the next trying to save as many people as they could. Shop workers that were working in the drugstores were also trying to help people. They were trying to get as many things from the drugstore that would help people like bandages and medicines and towels but sadly for some of the victims there was nothing that could be done. People were just coming out of the shops and their businesses to try and help. People were getting out of their vehicles but people were just coming across dead bodies. And then finally after driving for 2.2 kilometers which is approximately one and a half miles, Alex's van had sustained too much damage. He had hit too many people and he had also hit too many cars, too many telephone poles, bus shelters, like literally everything in his path that the van literally was not working anymore and it finally came to a stop 
which meant that the attack was finally over. However, Alec had not finished yet. This is not how he had planned for his attack to end. Now, as soon as the van came to a stop, Alec climbed out of the van. But at this point, a police car had caught up to him. And now Alec found himself in a standoff with a police officer. Now, immediately the officer pulled out their gun and pointed it at Alec and started shouting, get on the floor, get on the floor. Put your hands behind your head. But Alec, he was refusing. He was not going to get on the floor and he kept reaching for his pocket. He kept reaching for his pocket because he wanted the officer to think that he had a gun. It was very obvious that he wanted to commit suicide by cop which is why he was trying to provoke the officer into shooting him because the officer may think that he had a gun. But the officer remained calm. The officer actually figured out that what Alec was reaching for and what he kept pulling out was his wallet. So the officer went back to the police car, turned off the sirens, which were still wailing because they wanted to calm the situation down. <laughs> And then they went back to Alec and they said, come on, get on the floor. No one needs to get hurt here. Now you would think that Alec would comply, but he still refused. He wanted to die. He wanted to die in his mind, a hero. And this is when Alec actually pulled out his wallet from his pocket and he pointed it at the officer and said, I'll shoot you, I'll shoot you. Come on, get down, come on. And it was at this point that Alec realized that this officer was not going to shoot him. So in desperation, Alec started shouting, kill me, kill me, kill me now. But the officer again remained calm. The officer actually put their gun away and pulled out their baton and walked over to Alec, to which Alec was still adamant, I've got a gun, I've got a gun, I'll shoot you. And as soon as the officer came face to face with Alec, this is when Alec got scared and he finally surrendered. And this is when the officer finally placed Alec in handcuffs and he was detained just seven minutes after the attack started, which, oh my God, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that this attack only lasted for seven minutes and that whole standoff with the officer is also included in that seven minutes. When you think about seven minutes, that doesn't seem like a long period of time at all, does it? But in an attack, seven minutes is a hell of a long time. And I've got to commend the police here for getting on the scene that quickly and also detaining him that quickly. And in the aftermath of this case, as you can imagine, it was just chaos. People were running around with injuries, broken bones. Paramedics had set up an emergency medical center at the scene. Toronto's bus service and the subway were also completely shut down. Businesses in the area were also forced to close. Pretty much everything in the immediate area was put on lockdown because police were concerned that this attack might have been a part of a larger coordinated attack on Toronto. At this point, police didn't know the motive behind this attack. So residents, everyone in the local area were terrified. However, minutes later, the motive became very clear. People had started to find what Alec had posted on Facebook and his posts started to circulate. His identity was revealed. His face was all over the news and it was discovered that he was a lone incel. And this is when everyone started to mourn about what had just taken place. And in the aftermath, the emergency services had the awful task of trying to figure out who had been killed in this attack, who had been injured and it was soon revealed that 10 people had been killed at the scene. 10 people. 10 innocent people lost their lives. And the victims included Renuka Amarasinga, a 45-year-old single mother who left behind a seven-year-old son. Anne-Marie D'Amico, a 30-year-old graduate working as a financial analyst who had her whole life ahead of her. Chul Ming Chang, a 45-year-old husband from South Korea who worked as a chef. Betty Forsyth, a 94-year-old Scottish woman who was a cancer survivor and a loved member of the community. Dorothy Sewell, an 80-year-old grandma who was the foundation of her entire family. Mania Alnajar, an 85-year-old father from Jordan who was visiting family in Canada. So He Chung, a 22-year-old University of Toronto student who was loved by those around her. Ji Hun Kim, a 22-year-old Korean student studying, who was known as a force of positivity and happiness. 
Andrea Braddon, a 33-year-old aunt of four nieces and nephews who absolutely adored her. And then finally, Geraldine Brady, an 83-year-old wife, mother and grandmother who had survived cancer and was loved by her whole family. And just reading that list of those people, those 10 innocent people who were just going about their day on that Monday afternoon. And it really does hit home how many people have been affected by Alec Manassian. And then on top of the 10 people that were killed at the scene, a further 16 people were seriously injured. And that is only the seriously injured people. And that included injuries such as brain damage, spinal cord injuries, limbs had to be amputated. These 16 people had life changing injuries. But then you've also got to take into account the other people that were injured and their injuries were not life-threatening, but they are still victims of this. They would have still been traumatized by this event. But then just people there. Even if they were not hit by that van, they are still victims. There would still be people suffering effects from this day. And in the aftermath of this case, Alec got exactly what he wanted. He became a hero in the incel community. People celebrated what he did. Let that sink in. People celebrated the fact that he had killed 10 innocent people. And they celebrated that eight out of the 10 victims that died were women. The incel community saw this as an achievement. They even debated how many beers they should have each as a celebration for each woman that died. And they even gave Alec the nickname Saint Alec. There were even songs made up about him, celebrating him, and uploaded onto YouTube. And then shortly after this, Alec was taken in for his police interview and they finally got to ask Alec why he had committed this absolutely horrific attack. And this whole interview is actually on YouTube. It's nearly three hours long. And of course, I watched it. And what struck me about the whole interview is how cold and almost robotic Alec was throughout the whole thing. Why did you choose the van? Uh, because... It was larger than a car, therefore large enough to be effective, but not so large that it made maneuverability hard. He had no remorse for what he had done. He said everything so matter-of-factly. I think he was actually quite proud of himself for what he had done. He just calmly answered the questions. It took him a while to warm up to the interviewer, but as soon as he did warm up to the officer interviewing him, he just calmly answered the questions like he was having a regular conversation. What about difficulties with girls? No. No, no, no difficulties with girls at all? No. No, not at all. How do you feel about uh, girls in general? I am attracted to them. Oh, you are? Okay, okay. Have you ever had a relationship with a, with a, a female? I don't wish to answer that. He talked about all of the triggers in his life. For example, that Halloween party that was the original trigger for all of this. And that group of girls, they turned around and started laughing and pointing at him. On Halloween of 2013, I was attending a house party mm -hmm. and I uh, walked in and attempted to uh, socialize with some uh, girls. Uh, however, they all uh, laughed at me and uh, held the arms of the uh, big guys instead. I felt uh, very angry. He talked about his general views on girls and women and how it was unfair that nobody ever seemed interested in him and he was such a gentleman. It's basically a movement of angry uh, incels such as myself who are unable to get laid. Therefore, we want to overthrow the uh, chads, mm -hmm. which would uh, force the Stacys to be forced to uh, reproduce with the incels. He even at one point called himself a supreme gentleman. Because I considered myself a supreme gentleman, I was angry th that they would um, give their love and affection to obnoxious brutes. He also talked about his experience on incel forums and his interactions with Elliot Roger and Chris Harper Mercer. So how did you learn of Elliot? We uh, private messaged each other on uh, Reddit. Yeah. After I saw one of uh, his posts, we just uh, talked about each other and got to know each other. We found each other very interesting. We both had the same uh, frustrations at society. And Alec confessed to what he did. And in the months that followed, Alec remained in jail awaiting trial. And then two and a half years after the attack. It is now November 2020, 
so locked down. And this is when the trial of Alec Manassian began. And it was actually over Zoom. And during the trial, Alec and his defense team decided to go for the defense that he was not criminally responsible because his autism severely distorted the way he acted and the way he thought and affected his decision making. And autism rights advocates were furious about this because people that have autism already face stigma. And the fact that Alec was trying to use this as a defense for mass murder, it was only going to make that stigma even worse. And in the end, the defense did not work. He was found to be highly intelligent and well-functioning, and his autism didn't impede his decision-making and his ability to make morally correct decisions. And by the end of the trial, Alec was found guilty on all charges, which included 10 counts of murder and 16 counts of attempted murder. And he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. And in the aftermath of this absolutely heartbreaking attack, a memorial was set up near the street where it happened. And in the months after the attack, many people filed lawsuits against Alec Manassian and also the Ryder Van Rental Company. A chemistry professor named Amir was left with a brain injury, spinal fractures, memory loss, anxiety and depression, and he sued for $6 million dollars in damage. A woman named Catherine sued for $3.6 million after suffering a brain injury, a collapsed lung, and fractures in her spine, pelvis, and ribs. The family of Anne-Marie D'Amico, which was one of the victims that lost their lives in this attack, has filed a $1 million lawsuit and intends to donate any of that money to the Anne-Marie D'Amico Foundation, which supports women who are victims of violence. And then finally, a nurse named Amoresh sued for $14 million after they sustained a spinal cord injury and a brain injury that meant that she could no longer move any part of her body below her neck and she could no longer breathe on her own without a machine. And even more tragically, Amoresh never had the chance to leave the hospital. And three and a half years later, in October of 2021, she died of her injuries as a result of the attack by Alec Manassian, making her the 11th victim of today's case. And cases like this particularly make me sad. Why did this have to happen? Incels are not inherently bad people. However, there is a very large majority that are so full of rage and anger towards society and especially women. And it is scary that the damage that they can cause. And I do think that some of the responsibility of cases like today land on the forum sites like Reddit and 4chan. And I do think that Reddit have made improvements to their system. And I do think that they monitor very dangerous and damaging conversations. And I do think a lot of them are shut down on Reddit. And I I don't know about 4chan, I'm not sure, but I do think that there needs to be more regulations on these forums. Because Alec declared on these forums the day before what he was going to do. Again, like Elliot Roger, he posted his manifesto everywhere. He was also posting very worrying videos on YouTube. He was also posting about what he was going to do on these forums. So even though Alec Manassian is 100% responsible for what he has done, there does need to be change on these forum sites. But now I just want to end this video remembering the victims of today's case. Anne-Marie D'Amico was described as a bright spirit that could light up a room. She was a hardworking businesswoman with a promising future. She was only 30 years old. Chul Min Chang was described as having a bright smile and a passion for life. He'd been married for 20 20 years and his wife misses him greatly. He was only 45 years old. Betty Forsyth was described as an incredible woman. She was a cancer survivor who loved the casino, Coronation Street and a good cup of tea. She was 94 years old. Dorothy Sewell was described as a sweet and caring woman who was the foundation of her family. Her best friend and sister, Joan, misses her greatly. She was 80 years old. Munir al Najjar was described as a loving man who believed that there was beauty and good in everyone. He cared deeply for his whole family. He was 85 years old. 
So Hee Chung was described as a kind, gentle, smart, and ambitious woman. She was a college student with a bright future ahead of her. She was only 22 years old. Ji Hun Kim was described as a force of positivity who always had a smile on her face. She was a college student with her whole life ahead of her. She was only 22 years old. Andrea Braddon was described as having a smile that could light up a room. She was a shining light to her four nieces and nephews who adored her. She was only 33 years old. Geraldine Brady was described as a sweet and gentle grandmother. She was a cancer survivor and she cared for everyone else before herself. She was 83 years old. Renuka Amarasinga was described as the bravest person you could ever meet. She had overcome huge adversity to raise her seven-year-old son alone and the two of them were best friends. Her son will now grow up without his mother. She was only 45 years old. And finally, Amoresh Tesfamerium was described as an incredible person, beloved by all. She dedicated her life to helping others as a nurse. She was only 65 years old. And my heart goes out to every single person that has been affected by today's case. As always, let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions on today's case. And also let me know your case suggestions because I always want to know what you want to hear next. And that is everything from me. So I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.